Hi, Dr. Bob. I wanted to talk about magnesium, and in particular, magnesium as related to mental health um, and uh, depression and anxiety, because they're very closely related. Magnesium uh, performs over 300 different functions in the body. And number one, uh, I call it the most important mineral we need because it's your heart mineral. Every time your heart's beating, that's magnesium being burned. Uh, every when I hear click, 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 that's that's magnesium. So when you get a heart attack, you go to the uh, you go to the hospital. The first thing they do is put you on a magnesium drip. Um, but you don't really realize how important it is uh, for magnesium, uh, high levels of magnesium in the brain. So we're going to talk about that a little bit because without that, you know, if you if you have low magnesium, uh, that can lead to depression and anxiety. And I'm going to tell you why. Magnesium uh, maintains the electrical stability of the nervous system. And that shows you the importance of it right there for your brain. It, it regulates serotonin and uh, other neurotransmitters. So again, low magnesium, your brain just is not functioning uh, properly. Um, and so you end up with anxiety because of the lack of magnesium. A good example of this would be, uh, you know, magnesium reduces anxiety by stimulating glutamate. Um, and which in turn stimulates and excites brain cells. Well, once again, without the magnesium as sort of the, the first mineral you need to stimulate the glutamate, um, or it allow it to be absorbed by the brain, well then, you know, now you've got this glutamate sitting there unable to function. So these are, this is sort of gives you the idea that how important uh, magnesium is for the brain and how it can lead to depression. Um, you know, if, if you get anxious about something, um, you know, for instance, uh, they did a study with some college students that when they had their final examinations, they, their stress levels went up. And so what happens when you get into that kind of situation, your body starts producing all this cortisol. And that's, you know, a really bad thing for the body. So when you, you, and that depletes your magnesium. So, uh, the, what they found is that, um, once the, you know, the examinations were over and the final exams and then people began to calm down a little bit, the people that had enough magnesium to begin with, well, they recovered and they felt okay. However, the people that were already low on magnesium to begin with, you know, something like this final examination, they just implode. They just, they go into a deep depression and, and high amounts, uh, high levels of anxiety because, you know, they're never able to uh, re, you know, recover from this. And there's just so many functions in the brain that require the magnesium to be there. Uh, for it to function properly. Now, what I promoted for years is something called magnesium l Um And uh, this is, you know, magnesium with an amino acid that is really good for getting into the brain um, and crosses the brain blood barrier. There's been a lot of studies with this. A uh, common name for it, or a trade name, I should say, is Magteen. I've been selling it for years. I take it every single day. I have for many, many years now. You know, it, it acts very subtly. But, you know, I think that can really, that type of magnesium... Um, uh, can really help with the brain. 70% of the population, at least here in the United States, is low on magnesium. So you could almost say that generally uh, it, worldwide. It's anywhere from 50 to 70% of the people, at least half, probably more, are very low in magnesium. Uh, men require around 400 milligrams a day, women around 310, maybe 325. Uh, you know, when you're looking at that high amount, you really want to think about supplementing with um, with some kind of magnesium. Pumpkin seeds, for instance, very, very high in, um, in magnesium. But you look for green foods. Uh, it's in chlorophyll. You know, chlorophyll is identical to a human blood cell, except that human blood cell has iron in the middle of it, at the center, and then a chlorophyll has magnesium at the center of it. So uh, you, all your green foods, chlorella is the best example of any kind of a green food, something I take every single day, very, very high in magnesium. Spirulina also very high in, in magnesium. But you need to eat a lot more salads, uh, not lettuce, because there's really not very much chlorophyll in there, but you got to get, you know, your greens, your parsley and kale and uh, you know, uh, cilantro and all these green foods, uh, arugula, my favorite, um, and you'll begin to get higher levels of magnesium in there. You could also supplement, as I said, magnesium l is my favorite. Uh, and then I also have liquid angstrom uh, magnesium that I promote because you take some, hold it in your t uh, under your uh, in your mouth as long as possible. It goes into your bloodstream through the sublingual duct.
So it's just magnesium directly into the bloodstream. You don't have to worry about different types of magnesium. Uh, there's, you know, the best one is probably magnesium citrate. It's the most popular form. It doesn't have the most amount of magnesium. Um, but uh, people sell, I think, magnesium oxide. It can cause diarrhea. Hyd magnesium hydroxide, I think, it can cause diarrhea. It doesn't absorb nearly as well. So it ends up, uh, you know, loosening the bowels. Um, you know, if you have... Uh, muscle twitches or eye twitches, you know, that's a pretty good sign that you're low on magnesium. And again, you know, you look at the most common way people die around the world is by heart attack. It's no doubt, it's not even close. Um, you know, cancer is a distant second. And so making sure you've got magnesium for the heart is such a critical, you know, component to, to being healthy because that's everything. That's your heart. Your heart gives out or it could just be low magnesium. As I said, when you go to the hospital, you know, and you had a heart attack, they're going to put you on a magnesium drip immediately and they want it again directly into the bloodstream. This is the advantage of taking in its angstrom form. So magnesium for, uh, you know, not only for your heart, but for depression and anxiety. Uh, you probably didn't know about that one, but uh, it is just so important for the brain. Again, that's why I take magtine, magnesium l Um I take calcium l for my bones uh, and for my teeth. And uh, you want to take that one uh, with some vitamin D and maybe vitamin K2. Um, but, but that's for another video. This one, magnesium for the brain and for depression and anxiety. Make sure your levels are really well way up there. I don't think you can overdose uh, on magnesium. I think your body will use as much as it wants and needs and then kind of get rid of the, the rest of it. It's all about absorption though. Uh, anyway, Dr. Bob, magnesium. See you guys next time. And please do not forget to subscribe and like this video. It really helps me out with the algorithms as usual. And I really appreciate that more than you can possibly imagine.